Hi there everyone, and today we're going to be installing a relatively unknown version of Windows. This is a version of Windows that was designed specifically for older computers and maybe less powerful hardware. It's Windows Fundamentals for Legacy PCs, otherwise known as Windows FLP as we'll be calling it throughout this video. Now it was made in 2006 by Microsoft and released via their software assurance program, so it wasn't available to the general public and it was designed for computers with low hardware specifications. It was introduced just before Windows 98 and ME went out of support and was primarily designed to replace these aging operating systems on low end hardware. So for example, if you're a business that had Microsoft software, your PCs ran something like 95, 98, NT4, things like that. Of course, those were going out of support, but you maybe couldn't afford to replace the hardware. What you'll do is you'll install this and you'll be able to run a relatively modern operating system on your older hardware. Now it's based off of Windows XP embedded so it has the same hardware requirements as XP but you'll notice that on lower end machines it runs much better than what standard XP would of course. There's several key differences between Windows XP and Windows FLP that we'll go into later in this video. Now I'm installing this on a computer that exceeds the minimum hardware requirements for XP. This is a Dell Latitude D610. Standard XP runs absolutely fine on it, but I still thought it'd be pretty interesting to show you. So let's boot from the DVD drive here. And we're gonna set this up. So one of the first key differences you'll note is that the installer is completely different. What it actually does is it boots into the a Windows pre-installation environment. So right from the very start, it's much easier to install than what Windows XP would have been for some users. And as you can see there, we've got Windows XP boot screen here, and it's gonna launch straight into a graphical setup right from the outset. Okay, so we're just booting into the graphical installer interface right now. And a couple of minutes later, we're here at the introduction screen. So as you can see, as I've said before, immediately a graphical installer interface so it's quite nice to see. Definitely much better than what standard Windows XP setup was. We will accept the terms of the license agreement. And as you can see right away, one of the interesting things we can see is that not only do we have the option to immediately provide an unattended answer file for the setup. So we can, for example, if you're an administrator, you're installing this on several PCs. What you could do is you could basically plug in a flash drive or some sort of drive with a answer file which you've pre-made and it will basically complete the entire window setup for you from there. But we also, as you can see here, we've got the option to connect to a remote desktop session. Now, Windows Fundamentals for Legacy PCs was also the first real Microsoft operating system that was designed for thin client machines. Microsoft officially described it as a lean client operating system because it had the ability to run native Windows applications as well but it was also designed for thin client machines to connect to Microsoft Remote Desktop and all of that. Okay, it's time to insert the product key. So I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so we've entered the product key and now it's asking us to choose our regional options. So we're just gonna select the correct options here from what we have. Now, during the setup for Windows XP, you'll know that you don't really have much choice to choose different components that you want to install, especially during the initial setup. But what we have here is we have different configurations that we can install. So we can have a minimum configuration. As you can see, space required 611 megabytes. The typical configuration here, 651. And the full configuration, even then, just uses just above 1.1 gigabytes of space. But we're gonna choose the custom configuration here, and we can see what kind of components we can install. So this definitely is much more different than Windows XP setup here. Okay, so we can have additional driver support here, Internet Explorer, language support, local management support, the Windows help file, Windows media player, and Windows Messenger. Now on this computer, we have a 60 gigabyte hard drive. So I'm gonna install all the components so we can take a look at them in more detail later. Okay, and now we have the option to choose what we want to do with regards to hard disk and selecting where we want to install it. Now you have to format the drive that you're installing this on. Even if we just click next, for example, as you can see, using this volume as the installation partition will erase all data on it. 
So unlike Windows XP, for example, you can't choose to install to a different Windows folder. You have to format the drive or the partition. And we now have the option to format it as well. So I'm gonna leave NTFS, default allocation unit, and we're gonna have a quick format. Drive letter C. Okay, so it's asking us for our organization and name. So we'll just complete that. Okay, so this is quite similar to what Windows XP does. It now needs us to provide a computer name and an admin password. So we'll leave that as it is, we'll just set something really basic. And here's something else you have to consider as well. Windows Fundamentals for Legacy PCs requires you use a strong password. This is something that the Windows Server Operating Systems kind of did. So it actually makes sure you provide a good password for the administrator account during the setup. Windows XP does not do that, so we'll put something strong. Okay, and now it's also asking us to configure our network settings. So the, you can configure your network settings now and you can have them immediately applied. So there's no need for us to change network settings. So this can definitely be good if you were connecting the machine to a domain, for example. You can immediately choose your DNS servers you want to use if you couldn't do them at router level, for example. But we can leave all these to work with DHCP at the moment. And as we can say, we can either use a work group or we can join it straight to a domain. So that's definitely useful. We can see we've got a domain name there and the admin username and password that's needed to assign the computer to the domain. So we're just gonna leave this as work group for the time being. And as you can see, it now provides us with a summary of everything that we're about to do. So you can see we can scroll through very quickly. As you can see, it shows us some of the options and components we've installed. And shows us our desired network settings as well. And so we just click install. And it goes to format the partition initially. And we're now copying the operating system to the hard drive. So a couple of interesting things to note about Windows FLP. The support date is exactly the same as Windows XP. So it ended on April the 8th, 2014 as well. Microsoft did kind of replace this with Windows Fin PC in 2011, which was basically this, but Windows 7. Basically Windows 7 for less powerful machines and more embedded kind of, of applications. But you'll notice that this is completely different to what Windows XP does when it comes to setup. It, it kind of does look similar to the later stage of the Windows XP setup. You know, because you have both the text mode and the graphical mode setups, you know, with the blue screen and all of that. But yeah, this is definitely a nice, more modern kind of setup here. It's very similar to what you would find on POS Ready 2009, basically things like that. It's also interesting to note that this was the first Windows operating system released with the new branding. As you can see, we've got the new font there, the new Windows logo, the slightly brighter one that was being used for Windows Vista and above. Okay, so this phase of the installation is complete and the computer is about to restart. So let's see how this ends up. And as you can see, we've got Windows XP's boot screen here. And the first boot agent is starting. So what this is, is basically a utility that runs to prepare the operating system for use. So quite a lot of the configurations also done here as well. So this is something that you do see for quite a while. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes now and the computer's rebooted several times into that first boot agent again. But now we're finally at the welcome screen. And as you can see by default, we've got the classic log on. And one thing that's interesting right from the very start is that we've got a, we've got a new kind of login image here. As you can see, we've got the Windows Fundamental for Legacy PCs logo here. And by default, we have the option to push control or delete. So see, we now need to log into the system. Of course, I get the password wrong. And as you can see, we're logging in now. And we're now setting up our personalized settings. The XP Luna theme come back. And now we're at the FLP desktop. So right from the very start, as you can see, there's definitely a few key differences. We've got absolutely no fonts moving whatsoever. Every piece of text is completely rough. The start button text here, the administrator text here, no fonts moving whatsoever. Nothing in the start menu. Very small selection of programs in the all programs section here. 
And what you'll notice as well is that there's a lot of Windows 2000 icons actually here. Okay, so now let's have a quick look around Windows FLP. Let's have a look at the desktop, some of the included programs, things like that. So the first thing I want to point out is the icons. Now, as you can see right now, we have the Windows XP icon style. You can see with the recycle bin there, all of these icons are the Windows XP ones. Everything here, the hard drive, the folders, everything like that. Now, what's interesting is if we switch the system to 16-bit color mode, what you'll see is that the icons actually change to the Windows 2000 style icons. So you can see the My Computer icon looks a bit XP-like, but it definitely does look different. On the Recycle Bin, we've got the Windows 2000 icon for that. Windows 2000 folder icons, desktop and all that, that's Windows 2000 style. The Internet Explorer icon looks like the one from IE5. The hard drive, all of these icons basically look like the old ones from Windows 2000. But if we switch the system back to 32-bit color mode, all the icons are changed back to Windows XP icons. Now, I believe Windows XP doesn't do this. Even if it's in 16-bit color mode, it will still display the XP icons, albeit with its and color differing. But this is clearly something that Microsoft has done to optimize the interface for computers that couldn't really handle the Windows XP icon interface and things like that. So the system does start into the 16-bit color mode by default. And see under our themes, we've got the Windows Classic theme and the Windows XP theme. So Luna is included with Windows FLP, but you'll notice that the default desktop background is just a shade of blue. There's absolutely no images whatsoever included. So there's no bliss, nothing like that. Interestingly enough, we have the My Pictures slideshow screensaver here. Actually, we have some options here. There's no pictures on this computer at the moment though. And of course we have the Windows FLP logo. Now, funnily enough, it's actually called Windows XP. But of course it's the Windows FLP logo there. So we still have all of the Windows Classic color schemes here. And the three different kinds of Luna. So I don't know anyone that had olive green back in the day. I knew a few people that used silver. But most everyone used blue. Let's jump into the start menu here. And you can see on Windows XP normally we have various programs here. So for example, we have Internet Explorer, the Tor. But on Windows FLP we've got absolutely nothing. There's pretty much nothing installed however so there you go going to all programs here we have a very minimal selection of things we can actually use by default this is remember this is complete installation so if you're in our accessories here as you can see we have our core accessories so we've got all the accessibility stuff remote desktop connection a real early version of that as you can see we have the option to activate windows here but if we click on it you'll notice that it says Windows is already activated. This is because this version of Windows doesn't actually reuse product activation whatsoever. So that maybe could increase performance, you know, especially if you have to spend time activating. Maybe IT administrators maybe wouldn't have time to activate. Maybe, I know that most of the embedded versions of Windows XP don't actually include activation. So it's interesting to see that the interface is here, but there's no option to actually activate because you don't need to. Looking at some more accessories here, we've got the calculator. See, that's basically the same as what XP has. And Notepad, Explorer, WordPad. We have Internet Explorer pre-installed as well. The version of Internet Explorer pre-installed on this version of Windows is Internet Explorer 6, Internet Explorer 6.0.2900. So this is Service Pack 2 of IE6. Another thing we have included as well is remote assistance. So this was basically something that you could invite someone to help fix problems on your computer. Could have been something useful for administrators to use if they're in a workplace, for example, someone had a problem with their machine, they could use remote assistance to get a member of tech support to help you or something. As you can see here, it identifies itself as Windows XP Professional. One other thing as well that's also pre-installed is Windows Media Player 10. 
However, for some unknown reason, I'm completely unable to actually get that to run at the moment. So that's definitely something that needs to be ironed out. And finally, another program included is Windows Messenger. So you can see we have the option to sign in using the .NET Passport. I don't know when that I last used my .NET Passport, but there we go. This is Windows Messenger 4.7 from 2004. But apart from that, really, this is pretty much just Windows XP, but designed for less powerful and cap less capable hardware. This was definitely something that Microsoft wanted to do back in the time because it would help people to get onto a more secure platform, as I said earlier. This received updates until 2014 alongside Windows XP. But something interesting also to mention is that quite a few of Windows XP's features are actually available for use. However, they're disabled by default in order to help conserve your system resources on low-end machines. One of these is, for example, the welcome screen and the fast user switching that was introduced in Windows XP. So we're in the user accounts control panel here, and if we click on change the way users log off and on, we have the option to use the welcome screen. And we can use fast user switching as well. So if we have more than one account on this machine, we could switch between users. Let's go and apply these options here. And if we select our own account here, we have the option to change the picture. All of Windows XP's pictures are included. As you can see, we have the switch user option here. And if we click log out, we have the welcome screen here, just like standard regular Windows XP does. As well, we did choose to install the help system in the setup. So we have access to Windows XP's help system here. Now, this is basically exactly the same as what you would find in Windows XP. Even referring to the Windows XP Tor and other components of Windows XP that aren't actually included in this version of operating of the operating system. So quite a lot of this doesn't actually work or even apply to the operating system. But nonetheless, the help system is available for use in case you needed it. Okay, so quite a while later, I've finally been able to get Windows Media Player to run. This is Windows Media Player 10 as expected. So let's install that. Let's choose our options. We won't do that for now. And this is basically the standard Windows Media Player 10 really. So nothing's playing here. We have all the various components. It's attempting to read from the installation CD there. And on the subject of media files as well, if we go into my documents here, there's no sample music included, no sample pictures as well. We know that Windows XP does have some sample pictures and some sample music as well. So those are not included to save space. Now, rather bizarrely, what actually is included is the Microsoft Out of Box Experience. Now, this was used in Windows XP to initially help users set up their machines. So, for example, it would allow you to make your first account, set your update settings, things like that. This never ran on Windows FLP. You just got the first boot agent and then you were kicked straight into the administrator account. Funnily enough, this does actually still exist in Windows FLP though. And if we go to images here, we can see all of the out-of-box experience components that were never used. And we even have the title, the title.wma here. So that was the Windows installation music that would play. If you are interested, the sounds that were included in Windows XP are also included and used in Windows FLP as well. However, there's no sound drivers installed on this computer at the moment, so these won't work. But these are the same sounds as Windows XP. So thank you very much for watching this video today. This was just a very quick look at Windows Fundamentals for Legacy PCs and what kind of things were included in it and what made it work and basically the differences between Windows XP and it. So all in all, it was basically Windows XP, but with a lot of features removed and quite a few simplifications which helped it run better on really low end machines. But thank you very much for watching this today and I'll see you in the next one.